Rooms. Today's show is gonna be sizzling hot because we got Papi Chulo, Jaime Camille, as well as Mommy to be Brady Auracero, singer Diana Chanto, and we're gonna be talking about breakups. So sit down, relax, and join us right here on The Zoo. <laughs> Because we're so lazy Anna. today that we're not even gonna do a while. We're already sitting here, folks. Welcome to the zoo. We've got Nikki, we've got Vivian here with us, and today we are gonna talk about breakups in today's Ooh. big, big deal. deal. I mean, everybody, everybody in the world goes through breakups, some better than others. I don't do breakups really well, and I'm just wondering how do you guys handle breakups? Shall we go with the ladies first? I think everybody's different. I mean, yeah. I would love to know how you guys deal with them. I went through my own recently, sure. so. How long I, were you together? We were together for a full year, like a exactly year? one year. I did not know you guys were that, together that long. Yeah, in LA was, time, that's like a decade. <laughs> yeah, in dog years, imagine. Right. <laughs> Imagínate. And actually, it feels like even more because we were really like it was a very intense relationship. Sure. So we were actually together twenty four seven. Gotcha. So I think you know that's that's also hard. You know when you break up and and all of a sudden you just don't have this person mm -hmm. and these habits and these things that you do, these routines that you have with this special someone every day. So it's like a period of adaptation. Very, very tough period of adaptation. But What's that saying in Spanish about la costumbre? I always forget <clears throat> what it is. Que no cabe duda que es verdad que la costumbre es más fuerte que el amor. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, in my personal case, I, I think... Um, Again, every I think every breakup is different. It's like a rainbow, sure. and everybody has a different color and a okay. different shade. Um, in my personal experience, there's still or there was like a, a lot of love involved. Okay. So thankfully, like this wasn't like a ugly, bad, you yeah. know, resentful breakup. On okay. the contrary, right. which has been like that's what's been for me the, the toughest experience, I guess. Sure. Having to let go of someone you love. Aww. So yeah. So now I'm tearing up. <laughs> so you're single and you're ready to mingle? I'm single and not ready to mingle yet, no. <laughs> because we've been joking around all day long about how we have a big prison following. So yes. if wow. uh, you know, she's single, folks, you can send her letters. Is she you like know, a man in orange? <laughs> Now, I want to talk about, because you've been so strong through all of this, you know, and there are a lot of girls out there, and maybe men, who are going through a similar thing. What advice do you have to somebody that, you know, that, that they're in this new part of their life and they have to kind of reinvent themselves? Girl, don't cry. You'll mess up your makeup, okay? Continue. That's the thing, right? <laughs> well, I think um, it's important to actually let yourself feel the feelings you're feeling. Sure. And just allow yourself to just sit with them and... and actually confront them because I think for the most part what we tend to do is to distract ourselves mm. and either watch too much Netflix uh -huh. or eat a lot of ice cream yeah. and just do these things that make us feel good but for me you know some people drink wine or are gonna start smoking more sure. whatever the case may be in my personal case what I've come to know and discover about myself is that I wanted to live through this um, in a complete conscious state mm -hmm. and actually confront the situation because if you numb it, then you will inevitably make the same mistakes the next time around. And sure. I think the whole point of getting through a breakup that's really hurtful or, or painful is to be able to get out of it as a better version of yourself. Okay. And at least, you know, to... Yeah, be your own testimony and, and at the end use your own experience to help other people deal with their own stuff. Right. Because I feel that when we are in this kind of situation, it feels as if nobody understands you. It feels as if you're the only one that's hurting in the whole entire world. Everything is collapsing. And in reality, we've all gone through these kind of, of pains, sure. right? Either rejection, infidelity, um, whatever the case may be, violence even, or extreme jealousy, things like these. So, yeah, I, I feel that um, on the contrary of, of, you know, movies where you're like eating ice cream and watching movies all the time and all that stuff, in my case, um, I've been exercising a lot. Oh, good. Because, not because I want to look good, really, but more because I want to feel better. Yeah, but it's a good, and it's a good counterbalance to what's going on. Exactly, and I discovered, you know, 
if I'm not having sex, then <laughs> I have to get my endorphins and Somehow. my serotonin somewhere. Right. So um, maybe I should exercise more. Then. Exercise. Because <laughs> no. I'm also not getting sex. Okay. <laughs> I promise. Like it's really helped a lot. Like I don't. I'm not a really sporty person or right. athletic, really, to be honest. Sure. Um, but now I've been jogging. I am doing yoga. But I feel that the way that I'm taking it, it's like I need the energy that I have inside to right. move. Right, to release some... Huh. Yeah, you and to, to get release released. Somehow. Exactly. So every time if I'm jogging and I start sweating, then I'm thinking, okay, so I'm sweating the sadness. You yeah. know, I'm crying through my body too. Sure. So at the end, little by little, things start to feel better. And I, like, you know, it's been only a month, but I feel that, you know, now I can talk about it. Now right. I can sit here. Like last month, I couldn't even come to work. Because I was like, guys, I'm a mess. Like, right. I can't even. So, you know, it's important to give ourselves those times. But then, like, also have, I don't want to say a deadline, but in a way, yes. Like, to be like, okay, I'm going to feel bad for as much as I need to, but without dwelling in it, without dramatizing sure. the pain. I think it's so important what you said, too, <laughs> that it's really important, you know, for people out there to really face those emotions and not to mask it. Because, really, if you just put a Band-Aid on it, you'll really deal with it. And exactly, and not only you don't deal with it, but like then again, it's gonna come and bite you in the ass right. in the next relationship, and that's like the whole point is you don't want to make the same mistakes. And um, another thing that I would say is always end things if possible, if the situation allows it, with love. Okay. But always like with your limits, and I think that <clears throat> for me, this is becoming um, like my path or my journey back to myself. Because I believe in relationships, we get distracted. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful distraction. It's love at the end of the day. And you're infatuated and you have plans and a lot of beautiful things. But um, even within the relationship, what I've learned is you cannot forget about yourself even in the relationship. Sure. And the first person you always have to love is yourself. Right. Uh, so that, you know, that way you can love someone else okay. after. Because you cannot give what you don't have. And so that for me has been the biggest lesson and the best way to come back from it is to actually fill that void that this person or this expectation of a relationship mm -hmm. leaves in you with all the self-care you can give to yourself. So, okay. But you look amazing. You look fabulous. You. So to quote my favorite Sex and the City quote, the best way to get over a man is to get under another. <laughs> Okay, get oh underneath another man while we go to a commercial break. We'll be back with more of the zoo, folks. Okay. And we are back on the zoo talking once again about breakups and shakeups and all the crazy things that happen. A uh, lot of shakeups. That's a good shake one. It should uh, be called a shakeup instead of breakup. Yeah, actually. it is a shakeup because you kind of like, sometimes I think life, so certain things happen in life, whether they're good or they're bad, to help you grow as a person. So, and sometimes, you know, you need to get rid of a person in your life I'm to move on. I'm going to adapt that word and say, instead of I'm going through a breakup, mm -hmm. I'm going through a shakeup. Because Shake it, it up, shakes honey. you. Yeah, and it shakes you from the inside out. Right. So like, I feel that that's a great, great thing. And um, yeah, and talking about also that shakeup situation, you right. know, all these emotions that get moved and, and stuff. We, we tend to also, I feel, idealize and let's say, see on Instagram all these happy faces and all these smiles. My Instagram, it's all about me smiling. I'm not gonna put up, you know, a picture of me in the middle of my ah, crying people. Right. No, but we have to understand that we are all human beings that are going through so much stuff even though you know at first sight you don't see it there's a facade there's always a facade because of course you, you also don't want to go through life just like being miserable oh, and, I, agree. Oh, I'm, I suffer so much i'm such a victim i think know? that's like bad juju that you're putting out too. but it's important i feel you know to ask for help and, right. and to have your support system there by you and i have to say my support system i would not I would have not made it throughout this month, right. and I will continue to make it without my family, first and foremost, right. without my best friends, without my spiritual practices, right. whatever that may be, if it's meditation, if it's breath work, if it's prayer, whatever the case may be, we have to find balance again yeah. between our minds, our spirits, and our emotions, and also be able to ask for help. Right. And help sometimes also means um, you know, going to a doctor and, and ask for medication or homeopathy or, or CBD, for example, or mm -hmm. any kind of help that sure. you can get 
to actually um, yeah, ask for it. In my personal case, I haven't been through medication, thankfully. Um, I've been doing everything with my mind. Right. Um, but, you know, there's times where you just need that to reach out in that way. So you I said meditation was, has been really vital to you. Oh, yeah. I 100% recommend it. Even before the breakup? <laughs> Even before. But then again, before I was too distracted. Sure. So, you know, these things actually make you look inside again and, right. and, and really get back in track. And I think meditation is a great practice to... Um, get back into center, to get back into alignment, to rediscover yourself and start like reconstructing the pieces of, of your heart so that everything can be back to its, you know, well, base again, which is ourselves. Luckily, so. you have enough time to do all that stuff. Yes, I Unfortunately, have. I'm I'm like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm a interview. <laughs> didn't have enough time to do any of that stuff because he's going crazy in his new movie called Las Pildoras de Mi Novio. She got to interview him, and we're going to find out what exactly those pildoras are about, hopefully. So check this out. Check it out. I met someone, se llama Hank. Es como si un rayo me hubiera partido en dos. Hank is, is casi perfect. Es apasionado y es amoroso y es sexy. Es un gran, gran amante. Quiero que te vengas a una isla conmigo. Nos iríamos mañana. Oh, boy. Mild, bipolar, NOS, agoraphobic, hyperlexic, with OCD, GHD, ADHD, and cyclical Tourette's. It is remarkable that someone has achieved this level of success with meds. Bueno, las píldoras de mi novio. Yo creo que te tendría que llamarse la farmacia andante de mi novio. ¿Por qué? Totalmente. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué no se nos ocurrió? Bueno, Ay, doctor, ¿saben qué? No aprecio sus comentarios. Doctor, no aprecio sus comentarios porque sí, tiene algunas condiciones. Uh, Al <risa> alguna que otra 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 sí eh, pero pero Jess es su mejor medicina oh, el amor pero no pero no tanto la, pero no tanto <risa> Tengo un gran problema. I forgot my meds. Oh. You're going to start to uh, feel some clicks. Get a lot of sleep. Am I clear? You're about to have a manic episode. Yay! Bienvenido de nuevo al canal. Espero verte ahí entonces, Hank. ¡A huevo! ¡Backstreet Boy! Interpretar a alguien que tiene una enfermedad mental debe ser complicado, pero Hank tiene 20. <laughs> 23. Sí, pero es lo que es importante porque creo que, que, que era, era una cuestión de usar la comedia como un vehículo para tocar un tema importante, uh -huh. eh, singularte obviamente de, de las condiciones mentales que son cosa seria, pero a la misma vez eh, eh, hablar del tema sí. y tocar el tema, porque mucha gente es, hay como un tabú ¿no? de que no hables de eso, no toques. Así que poderlo tocar abiertamente con la comedia, que es una herramienta padrísima, es increíble. Sí, 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 no, ya se veía. Ya hace un trabajo espectacular, además, sí. porque es un personaje bastante complejo, tiene muchos cambios de estado de ánimos, de subidas y bajadas, sí. y, y como dice, no tuvo que estudiar realmente las enfermedades, bueno, las condiciones que tiene esta persona para poder realmente dar eso, ¿no? En pantalla, y lo hizo súper bien. A ver, yo creo que por lo que vi en la película me da la sensación que os lo pasasteis súper bien. Sí. ¿Cuál fue una de las escenas preferidas? Ay, a mí el karaoke, cómo me reí con este El karaoke estuvo cómo bueno. Baila. Pero también lo, padre, también lo padre de la, de, la, de la película, fue un poco, tuvimos muchos llamados nocturnos, que son mortales, porque empiezas cuando el sol cae y cuando el sol sale y dice, ya no tienen más noche, váyanse a dormir. ¿no? Sí, entonces teníamos todos los horarios cambiados. Cambiados, pero estábamos con nuestras familias, con nuestras ah, familias, bueno. y eso, era muy, eso lo, 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 lo sí, alivianaba mucho, claro. la verdad. Uh -huh, claro. ¿Me, ¿Me podría bajar un poco la música, por favor? ¿Mejor? Gracias. Maria, Maria, we're all jealous of you. <laughs> Folks, we're going to go to a commercial break. Keep it locked right here on The Zoo. Zoo. All right, folks, we are here on The Zoo with Nada Más y Nada Menos que one of our wild correspondents and mommy to be, Maria Bracero. Welcome, Maria. <laughs> 
<laughs> you get away with a lot being pregnant. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Are you milking it? Time. I'm milking in what sense? Like <laughs> no, in terms of using it to your advantage. Like I'm not oh, waiting yeah, on this absolutely. line. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, you should. Yeah. In yeah, what sense? Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not like lifting any weights. Oh, you good girl, you should. Like, exactly, yeah. I mean, you're literally glowing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So, speaking of glowing, you obviously yes. get that a lot, right? But is Aww. it actually something that you feel as a woman? Like, they say pregnant women look more beautiful. Um, and you were talking about your hair and these kind of changes. Like, how is that? Yeah, I mean, you have, you're floated with hormones. And some of those hormones make your skin and your hair look amazing. I really? Have, yes, well, yes. What have you noticed in particular? I mean, I know you mentioned your skin and your hair, but like versus before, what was your skin like before? It was a little oily okay. and with more break so, sometimes. And the same with the hair. The okay. hair now, I, I feel like... It looks like very healthy. I can just go to a panty, you know, one of those ads because I've never had this hair. I always had it like more oily and right. now it's perfect. Oh, nice. So those are the things I've noticed. And then... Your nails? Your nails, your boobs, like grow a lot. <laughs> like seriously. Like a lot I of need to get pregnant. You're like, ooh, hello. But then, you know, so everything grows. Not just the boobs. I can everything. imagine. Do you know the sex of the baby yet? It's a boy. <gasps> it's a boy. Oh my goodness. Congratulations, sweetie. Thank you. So what is life like now doing junkets while you're pregnant? By the way, junkets are the press days that, you know, Maria goes and covers with yeah. all the different celebrities. So, well, let me, let me just first say how I started doing the junkets. Uh, and it was all because of Humberto. Okay. <laughs> we <laughs> were <laughs> going to cover the, the Latinos de Hoy Award. Okay. And I have told Humberto, oh, you're going to be in the red carpet. And he understood he was going to walk the red carpet. Okay. And, and then it's like, oh, are you covering? And it's like, no, no, I'm not covering the red carpet. Right. Like, I'm walking the red carpet. I'm like, who's covering then? And I was like, maybe you. Oh my gosh. So I was just thrown into into the wolves. Yeah. I had no idea about <laughs> anybody in the red carpet, but it turned out very funny because I would be asking people like musicians, oh, you're an actor. And they're like, no. <laughs> and I, but, but it turned out like... There, there is a show like that though <laughs> online uh, with, oh goodness, Tig. She's a comedian. Maybe you've seen oh, it. Oh, the one that doesn't know anyone. She doesn't know anybody. Yeah. So <laughs> that was... I could be that person. <laughs> Tig Notaro, if I'm not mistaken. That was That's totally me. I could be that person too. Like, yeah. I don't know anyone and it's just like I in that in that movie I'm like no idea sorry just and so I'm an much. actor like I should yeah. know so much and so now much. you've interviewed so many people what has been some of your favorite moments okay so Billy Bob Thornton <gasps> oh I do remember that for with the Santa Claus movie Santa Claus Bad Santa I gave him a list of things that <sighs> Bad Santa could bring me for for Christmas sure and one of them was I love Korean spas so I said oh, nice. I want an annual pass for a Korean spa but he read anal pass <laughs> <laughs> So he thought I was asking him for an anal pass oh, in a oh Korean Jesus. spa, you know? And that was, that, like, yeah. Very on brand with Bad Baby, Santa. Exactly, yeah. yes. Oh, but I my favorite that. was Aaron Paul. Oh, yeah, Aaron Paul actually nice. made the announcement of my pregnancy. I did see that. I was, as, like, trying to say, okay, how can I break the news sure. in a fun way? And right. then to your my, husband. And, no, my husband already knew, but, like, to the rest of the world. And then my husband is like, oh, you're... You want to break the news and you're interviewing the guy of Breaking Bad? Maybe <laughs> you should ask him. I was like, sure. okay, how can I ask him in a fun way? So I gave him a list of things I wanted as a pregnant lady, uh -huh. you know, in order like, that by the way, no one has been following that list. I ask tacos every day. Uh, I have like some of the goodies. No. Humberto doesn't bring you anything? Oh, to the <laughs> office? <laughs> the nerve. Solo dolores de cabeza. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was one of the cutest moments because also you could see he was he's a genuine nice person sure. and he was really happy for me. I saw that interview. And it's like he even asked me at the end of the interview, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, excuse Aww. me, are you asking me to take a picture with you? It shouldn't be the other way around. But like he was like so, so, oh, so, so sweet. sweet. And he was also so, yeah. very surprised when he oh, was yeah, like he reading was, it like, I don't know. He thought <gasps> at the beginning I was going to quit because it's like it's a notice to LATV. Can you read it for me? So he really thought. I was oh gonna, my God! Yeah. He's like, you're not quitting, right? I'm like, no, no, no. But he did give you an idea if things don't, if they don't bring the tacos. Exactly. <laughs> Hello, I'm the race. <laughs> Thank goodness he didn't get an anal pass, you know. <laughs> no, I know, I know that. No, I that. Mean, I love you so much. You have such Aww. a beautiful heart, and you're such a beautiful person. You you're gonna be too. such a good mom. I what are you most so excited about mom. for motherhood? Ah. Uh, 
I mean, I guess, I don't know, because I, I don't think until you have the baby in your arms, you understand. I feel you, yeah. Please do a photo then shoot. I'll, I'll do a complete photo shoot yes. of the entire thing. I'm doing, I'm trying to do a natural birth. Like, I feel in free. water? Goes. Not in water, but by natural, I mean no epidural. Like, okay. you know, no drugs. But in the hospital. Wait, in the a hospital epidural? with midwives, not with doctors. Something goes wrong, there's a doctor around the corner, and I'm in a hospital. So I'm like, that's a good idea. Huh? Not too old school, like Not they too do. Old school. Yeah, like as That's too dangerous. old as I could, but within like safety that I feel sure. okay. Your husband yeah. better get you a really good push present. <laughs> is he gonna cut the cord? Ah, no! Oh my gosh, that's so people, scary! Yeah, some it's men scary. are like, no, are I'm gonna like faint or vomit, and I'm like, you we'll have to. We'll see what happens when he's in, because he, he doesn't like blood too much, so we'll see. I guess like... I mean, can you just cut like, anywhere? I mean, yeah, in the cord. They kind of tell you more or less. Like, okay, because I'm like... Around this area, you cut. God and forbid then, I, like, cut, like, the wrong part of the cord or something like that. That's why I'm <laughs> like, no, I, that's the why... The blinds come down. <laughs> 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 the electricity will go for a second in the hospital. Half, yeah, no. Imagine nothing. <laughs> no, no, it's gonna, it's gonna be like So, that. um, Nikki was curious about another topic. Like, okay. What funny. about... And me too. Like, what about pregnancy and sex? That's tricky. Okay. That's, I mean, it, it, it depends on the hormones. Like first trimester, you're very nauseous. Mm. So the idea of having sex, it's, it's not like the most appealing. Then on second trimester, you're still feeling amazing. All the good okay. hormones, the, oxyto the oxytocin, the estrogens. And then you feel like, okay, yes. You feel good. But then on, now on my third trimester, the belly is kind of in the way, and also oh, you yeah. you like I don't know. It's safe to have sex during pregnancy right. unless you're in a high risk. Then you have to sh to consult with your doctor. But just to know that that there is a risk, right? It makes me paranoid. So, Not wanna do so it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a good excuse. Like, do it like very gentle, right. very you know. We don't want to get too crazy here, yeah. right? especially when the baby starts kicking you. It's weird. No reverse cow oh, no, 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 no reverse cowgirl during pregnancy. No. Just one more. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk more baby after the break. Don't go anywhere. This is the zoo. <laughs> A baby mama to be, and our correspondent Maria Oracero, and we were we left it on a cliffhanger. We were talking I about know. sex uh, and babies sex and, and being pregnancy. pregnant while having a, a baby in the belly. Yeah. How many months are you now? I'm seven months. Okay, seven. And wow. in theory, there's also a lot of I don't know if it's myth or it's really science based, but a lot of the times they say if let's say you're past your due date, uh -huh. sex helps you to start the process, and not only oh. sex. The sperm, the sperm has, I don't know which, which uh, hormones, <laughs> but it triggers the brain that, okay, it's time, it's time to get going. Really? So oh one of goodness. the advices I had in one of the labor classes is like, if you're past your due date, then have let's sex. just start having sex, but have him, you know, coming right. inside, like, right. no, you know, go all the way. Wow. Because that's, that's what's going to make it pop. Pop. Also, the baby must be like, oh, this is not too good. I would be so afraid the baby would be born with like an eye patch, though. Uh, I don't. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like all this stuff He's on his very face. Well protected. Mm. Very cozy. You're telling him nothing about the female anatomy at all. That's the real. Oh my goodness, is this even G-rated? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just explaining things that I was told at the hospital, so right. it should be very educational. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. This is like. This is like Latin Discovery Channel. More, yes. Is your yes. husband going with you to labor classes? Are you all guys learning them, how yes. to breathe and all that Ooh, stuff? Yes, because it's very important that your partner is on the same page as you. Because if I'm, I'm going to be freaking out in pain probably. I'm going to mm. be like screaming in a very scared? wild. I'm not. I'm kind of excited. It's like really? you're going to a very primal moment yeah. where you can like scream. Oh my and, gosh. and like, you know, no one can say anything. Like, no <laughs> one can say she's crazy because no, she's in labor, of yeah. course. Yeah. You know, you can't just like really have that 
wild experience. I'm sure your adrenaline yeah. takes over too. Oh yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. A lot of the. What kind of cravings have you gotten yeah. while pregnant? Oh. Uh, cravings. I've been craving cheese a lot. Mm. Have you been eating it? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Pasteurized cheese because you cannot, eat, you know, eat unpasteurized cheese. It's I don't even. Pasteurized. I don't even know if I look at the label when I go to the supermarket. I mean, you're fine if you're not pregnant. Okay, okay, you're right. Okay, you're right. Oh, right. Is there you something you want to tell us? Never something. Never bother to look at. at you know. Yeah. Uh, the but American cheese pack. You really have to take care of yourself, what you eat, what you don't eat, because there's also something called gestational diabetes. Which that you have, I correct? happen to have okay. been diagnosed. And it's because the placenta with all the hormones that it's producing and everything, it can't produce enough insulin sometimes. So sure. you have to be very careful with the amount of sugar you, you uh. eat. And when you don't, you have macrosomic babies that are like really big babies. Oh, really? Oh, and really, you're a really very small babies. woman. Exactly. Yeah. There's no way a really big baby comes through this. So, so <laughs> I want it to be like <laughs> average. Or, right. I'm sure it'll be a tall, like when he grows up, it's going to be a tall baby because I'm tall, my husband is tall. Yeah. But, but coming out normal. Birth, exactly. Yeah. Coming out normal. Not too big. <laughs> right. Not Fun too size. macrosomic. <laughs> I hear that word that's like macrosomic. And I don't you know. took sugar out of your diet. I took sugar. And I you said amazing. you have a total lifestyle change since yes. you remove sugar. The diagnosis of gestational diabetes, I have to say, was a blessing in disguise. Really? Because cutting sugar, guys, cut sugar out of your, your diet. Okay. It doesn't make any good to you. You're going to oh, feel way more. I love pastry so much. Ah, you have a sweet tooth. I do huh? have a sweet but, tooth, yeah. But if you overcome that, the first weeks you're going to feel a little off. Okay. But then you're going to feel amazing. Okay, what about your husband? Does he get cravings too? Because they say that men kind of experience the same symptoms as women, which I'm the, like, really? No, but you know, he has like a, like a scientific explanation. It's because of the, you know, when we kiss, uh -huh. like we exchange uh, oh. hormones. So he gets my hormones. When I was getting uh, sick, sick, morning sickness, in the first trimester, he was also getting morning sickness. What? Oh yeah. my goodness, that's so crazy. Funny. But it's funny. And then with my cravings, he also gets cravings. So he likes cheese too, unpasteurized he cheese. Likes, <laughs> he likes pasteurized <laughs> cheese. Did you, stop, <laughs> did you stop craving sugar? I... The good news is I, I was never very into sweet anyways. Okay. I thought I was not eating sweets, sure. but then they put sugar in a lot of things you would not expect. Uh, yeah. it. Totally. It's true. Everywhere. Everywhere. You have Everything. to read, you have to be like Crazy. a food inspector. Like I, really read all these label, labels and see, okay, this has sugar, this doesn't, and like it, you would be amazed oh, yeah. where they put sugar on. Oh, there was sodium in the water that I bought yesterday, like bottled water. I was like, I didn't even know water had sodium. Does of course, it? no. But, <laughs> but like not naturally, does it? No, yeah, like yeah, because water has minerals. Oh, I didn't know that. But okay, that, I thought it was added. Sugar. <laughs> sure, but but that's like, sodium, not it. sugar. It's yeah. different. Okay. <laughs> but but okay. yeah, but then it has it. Okay. Gotcha. No, this like, is like the magic school bus. I love it. We're like Mrs. Frizz. We're learning so much about science <laughs> today. But the sugar thing, I think it's 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 a very tricky thing because I tend to have a sweet tooth. Oh, do you? Yeah. I, I always, know that. I've always had one. Um, and funny, like ever since my breakup that we were talking about before, like uh -huh. a month ago, I just stopped craving it. Like I just, I guess I lost my appetite sure. for some weeks. That's probably. It's um, because you weren't exchanging the hormones. That's why. Bueno, sí, imagínate. <laughs> now I have, have no sweet, hormone exchange whatsoever. Does he have a sweet tooth? Is that what it was? <laughs> that, that's what, now, did that you go through withdrawals? At first, did you get headaches? No. Really? I felt amazing from the get go. Because really? if you eat like fruit, it already has natural sugars. If you eat carbs, that transform into sugar. So it's not like you're cutting it's not like right. you're going onto these paleo diets that you're cutting all carbs or everything and then you know, it takes that time to readjust. My case was only refined sugars. Okay. That, that's bye-bye, the only thing. Are you exercising as well? Because a lot of women like do this like really intense workout and when they are done with the pregnancy, they look like they've never been pregnant. Like they look fit I and know. toned. I want to be like Giselle Banchan. Yeah. But after she gave birth, she looked amazing. <laughs> right? I mean, she has like three personal trainers sure. probably. And probably a cook <laughs> exactly. and a maid and all yeah. that what stuff. What kind of like workouts do you recommend? Are you doing yoga or are you doing something like Pilates or something more cardio based? I'm doing prenatal yoga and a lot of squats because that helps you before we hospitals were even invented. Women tend to give birth on under four. Oh, yeah, 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 by squatting. Because like, it's like taking out a poop. Like, like kind yeah. of, because <laughs> gravity, <laughs> yes, you, know? you just hang from Like you a after tree, all that sugar. I know, right? <laughs> and then you would just deliver the baby, because gravity is kind of helping you. Right, right. now, being laying on, the, on a bed, it doesn't actually do help. Do you want to do it that way? 
They don't let you at the hospital because it's not convenient for the doctors. Of, of course not, of it. course. But but they let you do it all the way until you deliver. Like so, while I'm contracting, I can be doing anything I want, and then the moment of the pushing, then I have to. Wait, why why did you not consider doing it underwater? Like that's such a fad. I know, I guess, but because like you spend there so many hours in the water. And, and then you become like a, a, a rarita. I don't know. I just like Ooh. didn't like the idea of being in water with blood and this and cold and but yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Got well, it. thank you for all this insight on of pregnancy. Course. I don't know if any of us are gonna, you know, have to go through this anytime soon. But um, let's uh, well, let's you go own to and you own. yeah. Let's go to commercial break. And why don't you just teach us how to do some like prenatal breathing or whatever it is that you were doing? Prenatal breathing. <laughs> yeah, so that we can relax into the commercial segment. Pretty much, you just inhale mm. and push. Oh, oh, we'll be back with more of the zoo. <laughs> and welcome back to the zoo, folks. We've got sexy singer, songwriter, Diana Chanto. Yeah. Bienvenida. You guys, thank Did you, for you come me. in a leopard outfit on purpose, honey? Because with a zoo? Mm, no, I came with some sweats, getting all you guys ready. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Hannah Montana. Yes. You do it all. You have two identities. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, Makeup artist yeah. by day, superstar musician by yes. night. Yes. Actually, yes, though. that's what she is. Like you wouldn't believe. First of all, she's the one that makes us. So beautiful, and you know, our hair and makeup is always on point here in the zoo because of I her. I look like Steve Buscemi until you get, <laughs> no. until you get here. No, you guys look great. But then Thank she's also a super talented artist. Thank you. And Thank you. why don't you talk to us a little bit about your journey as a singer yeah. and you know, as an artist in general when it comes to music? Because yeah. a lot of us don't know anything like about you, like <laughs> right, kind of talents on that yes. side. We yes. do. So yeah, well, away. I've been singing since I was in high school. Um, I actually assist a big artist named Oplus, which you guys had him here on the zoo yes. already. Really yes, sexy too. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll say me, but yeah, him too, yes. <laughs> you, you as well, but he's definitely sexy, yes. But, um, it's been going really great the past six months. We're doing a lot of songwriting and working uh, for, like, Anita. We just were in uh, New York with Don Omar and Joel Irandi. Uh, I, we just did a song for Fashion Week for a, oh, the designer, uh, Sukena. Okay. So that's really cool. It's Naomi Who, Campbell's favorite Sukena? designer. Yeah, I was going to say, somebody really famous loves Yes, Sukena. yes, Naomi Campbell. They've been in Nylon and Vogue, in UK, USA. So nice. I'm, I'm not going to be in New York Wednesday. Aww. But, you know, Fashion Week's happening and my voice will be... Heard. heard with the Tom Ford and Gucci wow. and all that. So that's the fashion of it all. Yes, yes. Now I'm super wow. excited because Carol G's big hit. You yes. recorded the demo, the song that Carol G has out right so now with Nicki Minaj. The English version. She's gonna do an English translation of okay. Tusa. Sure. So, what do you call Tusa in English? So, 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 okay. <laughs> so what does it mean tusa, in Spanish? Tusa is a Colombian term. Oh, la tusa. That's why. So la tusa means like like the depression kind of like it's kind of like oh like I'm in a depression. That must be from another part of Colombia. Oh, like, where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, we're <laughs> going to Colombia. My family's from Barranquilla, but I never uh, heard tusa before. It sounds like more tos. paisa. More yeah, paisa. Yeah, that, that, tusa sounds like like a gripe to me. Like uh, <laughs> that's how I'm feeling la tusa right now. Everybody's got la tusa here. Literally. No, but so we had the chance to. um you know, they contacted O Plus and said, hey, we need to do an English version of Thusa, the number one Billboard record. Yeah, And big we hit. go, two hours later, I cut the English demo vocals. They loved it. That I heard it. You sounded it. hot. Wow. <laughs> Have you actually hot. met Carol? Not yet. Okay. Soon, hopefully. I got to meet Anita, though. Oh, yeah. and, and tell us about that uh, particular job. So we did a song for Anita. It was supposed to be uh, Camila Cabello, Anita. She loved the record, and she sang the whole song. Because it's Spanglish. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I have yeah. to ask you, as a songwriter, you write these such incredible songs. Yeah. What does that feel like to, you know, create these babies, essentially, yeah. and give them off to another artist and essentially have them take all the credit? See, that's tough, no? no. You know what? We just go in to create. Sometimes uh, there are specific artists, like, you know, they want certain things, but we just create the song, and there are just some songs that you could just see in a bigger picture. Yeah, with you another know? artist. Yes, with another artist. And another voice. Exactly, with another voice. And then that just means so much, like, to see all these people sing our songs. It's like, wow. Like, right. to me, like, I feel like I made it. I feel like I'm the girl from Coyote Ugly. Do you remember yeah. Coyote Ugly? Yeah. She's yes. a songwriter and all that stuff, but... 
but then there are songs that I really emotionally connect with. They're like, no, sure. these are my songs. Do you write the lyrics and the music, or do you do just the music, or do you do both, or a lot how does of times that work? we do everything from scratch. Wow. We'll have a guitar player, bassist, with the, right there, everything from scratch. The production, the writing, demo vocals. Wow. So with O Plus, he writes uh, the majority of it, and then I cut all the demo vocals. So Becky G, Nati Natasha, any of those Latina, or even English. I just cut the vocals. And Do you get to keep your recordings? Like, you're like I want to hear myself. I want to hear Tusa, but I want to hear with my voice. Yes, yes, no. I mean, we just got to work with Jason Derulo, so that what? was Jason Derulo. Derulo. I know, I know. <laughs> what did you do with Jason? So we got to go over there. They have a song. Wait, over London. there meaning oh, where? To his house. We where? Where is it? Can you say where he lives? <laughs> no. Well, like, his house what state? Is it New York? Here. Okay, he's, he's, he's in Los Angeles. Okay. So we got to go to his house uh, in LA and... Uh, is it a house or is it a mansion? It's a mansion. Oh good, thank you for it's clarifying an, it's, it's, a, it's an estate, Ooh, literally. It's like estate. the front house is a game house studio and then he wow. lives in the back house. It was oh, it's crazy. It's the Jason Derulo estate. But you know, like, so I went to Latin American Music Awards and he performed. That's right, he I performed he was there. Yeah. And Neo performed, so it's nice to see like the cultures coming together yeah. and yeah. everyone wants to do Spanish music. Of course. So we cut vocals to possibly either get Anita or Rosalia or Carol G on this uh, future record with Jason Derulo. Oh, nice. So I got to cut those vocals and work with what him. What does that cut vocals mean? I'm sorry about my ignorance. <laughs> cut vocals is uh, do, like but record my voice. Okay. Yeah, and then so they send it to let's say Carol G, and she hears it, and she copies what I do thing. basically. And that's uh -huh. an honor. Okay. They're showcasing your voice on yeah. the music because the artist has to hear this demo, and it's up to yeah. them. You know, it's now based on your it. voice, yeah. whether or not they're going to record the song. So that must yeah. be very flattering. It is. Ah. It is. It's <laughs> made. She's like yes. yes. No, but it's. I love it. I'm very lucky and blessed to be able to do that. That's amazing. You know? And do you ever get to be like in the chorus, at least, of the actual song? Like, that you, know you recorded, you cut the vocals of? Like? Hopefully, with these future Don Omar song that we did, we worked with him, my vocals are in the background. So nice. hopefully they keep my vocals in there. And is Don Omar is a legend. Or Spanish. With it's him. in Spanish. Actually, no, well, the part that I'm singing, is it's a Spanglish song. So the part okay. I'm in the background is the English part. Cool. Yeah. And you went all the way to New York. Well, you were in New York doing that, correct? Yes. I okay. just got back at midnight. That's why I'm a little... A little raspy. freezing, yes. yes. Um, that cold weather. Oh, yeah. you're lucky. Well, not lucky because we were going to ask you to, like, sing something to us. I know me. You have a cold, so okay, fine. <laughs> we'll get you a rain check. We'll get that next, next time. time. Next now, time. Now, I want to ask, time. where do you draw from, like, your inspiration from, from your music? Is it from Breakups Girl? Oh, yeah. I've had so many breakups, actually. Really? Yeah. That have oh, inspired yeah. songs. Yeah. yeah we everything. should talk about the advice that you can give people like me, <laughs> I guess, on the okay, next Okay, you block. know what? We're going we're gonna to pause that. <laughs> okay. Because we want people to, like, just be at the edge of their seats <laughs> waiting to find out what it is that Diana's going to say. So we're going to go to a commercial break, <laughs> and then she's going to reveal all that tea, honey, okay? I will. Keep it on right here on the Zoom. We've got Diana here once again, who mm. we were talking about breakups and music making yes. and making that paper because of the breakups. Yes. Yes. Like the lyrics, right? If you get inspired in in love or, or pain or a little mm -hmm. bit of everything, or I don't know, what is like, what, like where me, is the inspiration coming music from? Music is capturing the moment. Okay. So if I'm in a breakup, I've made breakup songs. If I'm falling in love with someone, like I made a song for my boyfriend called Nos Enamoramos uh -huh. because Nos Enamoramos. But what I would say with a breakup, um, you have to focus on yourself after. Make okay. yourself better because I was in a really hard relationship. I didn't sing for a couple years. Okay. And when I got out of it, it was the first time I was able to get in the studio and not have a jealous boyfriend because I'm around producers sure. and all that stuff. So it really just was, had to learn to love myself again and be confident again. And at the end of the day, like we talked about earlier, we have to have self-love and just love ourselves. If we don't love ourselves to the fullest, no one's gonna fully love ourselves, like love us too. You know? Do you think you've become like a better version of yourself after a breakup? Every time. Oh, wow. Every single relationship is something to learn. You know, God puts people in our lives for a season, for a reason, so right. for a lifetime. You know, so everything is just a learning experience to take from. You've, you've talked about uh, making songs when you fall in love, yeah. when you fall out of love. Do you uh, think of songs where you're making love? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I do got a few little songs. Little Ay, little songs. 
you know, you know, because I love R and B. Okay. I grew up listening to Lauren Hill, Sade, Tony Braxton, the sexy tunes. Selena, yeah, all those. I love R and B. That's what I grew up. Have you ever been in the moment, like the heat of the moment, and you're like, hold on, I have to write this thought down? <laughs> yes, because I've done that. Yeah. Wait a minute. Really? Yeah. Really? Yes. Like, yeah. I get the phone, the voice memo, and I record literally like a melody or something. It's like, can you please up. hold? Let me yeah. write this down. You can't lose the magic. Right? Yes. Yes, you have to because I don't remember anything, so I'll forget right. two seconds later. Mm -hmm. Like. Damn it, but yeah, yeah, no, I do, oh, wow. I do. Okay, that's really yeah. inspiring. Okay, make, <laughs> you know, make, I have make some like money a while you're making love. I have like voice notes, literally. I'm like, oh my god, and I never name anything, but now like on, on the iPhone, it says like the last location you're at. Oh, so that kind of helps. Are you helps. serious? Yeah. That's really, that's a and lot. And the studio we work out of is right next to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, so <laughs> oh. I have like 20 notes that says Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles on it, literally. Well, they must have been finger licking good. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to make a song called Roscoe's, but yeah, no, just say with the breakup. We only live once, yeah. and as much as it's hard and everything, and like Vivian, we talked about, you got to just live the moment. Yeah. Go through it, go through the pain, and it's only going to make us stronger, and we have to have our self-worth and put your foot down when enough is enough. Well, so, speaking of self-worth, you know, you, you are a um, makeup maven extraordinaire. Yeah. yeah. Um, what advice would you give people out there? Because th I think that is so important, you know, whether yes. you're in love or you're out of love or you're about to make love, you better look good, know, you know? Right? We seem to like... <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but I personally like to try to look as best as possible. That's why I get my nails done before every show. Yes. <laughs> That's just me. And though. his hair and <laughs> everything. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. We gorgeous. should just yeah. saw buddies. Yeah, we should. We should. Now that I'm getting facials I and massages Carico. and all this self-care stuff. Korean spa with Maria. Oh, Korean yes. spa with Maria. <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. We should go. Um, you know what? Yeah, in relationships, we kind of like let ourselves go. We go to dinner, we're always eating, we don't really get ready, and we have to do remember to like take care of ourselves. And then right. once, yeah, we do break up, just put on the lipstick, keep going, go to the gym, just feel better because at the end of the day, we're the ones looking in the mirror at ourselves. So no, I, I want to get you're ourselves. such an incredible makeup artist. <laughs> thank you. This thank face you. is by Diana. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you, thank you, now, thank you. I feel like we're in this generation where anybody who thinks that they have a makeup palette is a makeup artist. And because you put up a video <laughs> yes, on YouTube. This is true. So, you know, you're cream. <laughs> How do you, you know, what advice do you have to, you know, people that want to be makeup artists and they're getting lost in all the cluster of these influencers? Um, see, like me personally, I went to cosmetology school. So yeah. I went to beauty school. Yeah. Like I've been doing it for over 10 years. Um, and back then we didn't have Instagram to just right. put all <laughs> these things and all that stuff. I had like a real portfolio and all that. Sure. Um, I just say for people, just follow the people you really like and try different things and whatever you feel yourself is most beautiful for yourself. You know, like Instagram, we get lost in comparing, and we have to stop what's all the, of that. <laughs> what's the best way to avoid getting lipstick on your teeth? Oh, you go like this. C wait, is that before or after the... <laughs> the after you put on the lipstick, like this. Oh. And then it'll everything around will go on there. And oh. then you go like this, and then you have saliva. <laughs> <laughs> this is so phallic, honey. I did not know that it would get this freak nasty. Um, that, you know. that is that's the trick, though. though. Yeah. That is the easy. trick, though. Wow. She always has lipstick on her teeth. I'm like, girl, do you ever look at yourself? And you can also, like, all the time. <laughs> Send her this interview. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a meme. Watch, this is gonna be a game. Everybody, let's do it. Like, uh -uh. And then no, we wonder why there's a coronavirus outbreak. Everybody's <laughs> out sucking their thumbs. Sucking thumbs. <laughs> ah, disgusting. Oh, oh, anyhow. Um, so what else yeah. is going on in your uh, career-wise for Diana? Um, for me, I mean, I have been super focused on working with the artist that I assist. Name's O Plus, once again. But soon, in the summer, I will be releasing my project. That little EP called Oye <gasps> Mi Canto. Oye oh, yeah. oh. De Diana Chanto. What's yeah. the vibe of the music? Uh, the vibe is Spanglish, the vibe is taking it back R&B nice. also, but still like, you know, like Afro beats and just sure. feel good music. I sing a lot about love. I'm not, there's some songs that are kind of like going out, things like that, but I'm more of like, I really love like love. Okay. I like storytelling sure. in my music. <clears throat> so that's, yeah, just are get you, back to the storytelling. Are you a night owl? Is that your process? Because I always hear about artists, oh. like they, they like to work overnight <laughs> and I'm like, how do you do it and not get wrinkles on your face, honey? I am a 24 hour owl. Yeah. Really? Yes, yes. So you don't sleep much? No. No. Because and that's where most of your inspiration comes, like at nighttime? Or is it more... Um, it's really at any time. Spontaneous. It's really it's spontaneous because we have sessions in the day, we have sessions at night. Really? It's really just 
I just love it so much. I can literally be in a studio. Like, right now in New York, we're in a studio for three days in a row, locked in. At, um, it's dark because there's, like, no windows that go, <laughs> that you can see out towards, right? Well, luckily, this studio was just full of vinyls, and it was just beautiful. Oh, nice. And it was, it was an inspiration because it was Jerry Wonder. He's the producer of my Hipstone Lie, cool. Maria Maria, and he invited us in his home in Jersey, nice. and we were able to create there, and it was just a blessing. Wow. So, How was the food? I had there? straight pizza. Oh, Ooh, I was tired okay. of pizza in New York, though. Okay, but at least it was New York pizza. Isn't New York pizza the best? Yes. No, I didn't like okay, it. But that was it. That must have been an off day. <laughs> Wait, but you were in New Jersey. Maybe that's why. <laughs> New York and Jersey. New York and Jersey was straight pizza. Pizza, pizza. Okay, maybe And it that's... was thin and, like, really, like, like sopa. Like sopa Ew, pizza. Ew, okay. Anyways, I didn't eat Diana much. Likes so. her, Diana likes her pizza like her man. I'll, thick. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. <laughs> Honey, where can people follow you online, by the way, so that they can keep up with everything yes. Diana Chanto? Well, you guys can follow me at Diana Chanto Music on Instagram, and also my beauty page, Glam by Diana Chanto on Instagram. Speaking uh, of your beauty page, you're going to release also your makeup line in the future, so yes, we should stay yes, tuned for that one. By the end of this year. Awesome. You're an empire. <laughs> yes. You are an empire. DC Glam, soon. Uh, well, thank oh, you so thank much you for joining thank us, Diana. Thank you, Diana. Really we love you. Thank you, thank you. I Thanks you to Maria Bracero for also <laughs> taking a break from her junkets to join us here in the studio. Folks, remember to follow us online at The Zoo on LATV, and you can watch our show anytime on YouTube and on the LATV app. We hope to see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.